Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about the programming languages that I have used this far throughout my professional career, but also that I have learned at university and already in school. But before we start with that, I want to welcome a couple of new subscribers here to this channel. This is for my friends in Poland. Welcome to the channel. I really appreciate that you are part of this journey. So let's get started. Around the year 2000, I learned at that time HTML, which clearly is not a programming language. And since that alone wasn't interesting enough, I added JavaScript and PHP to the mix. With that, I developed a couple of web applications, web shops, community software, things like that. And then also in my high school years learned Java. I went to a so-called technical gymnasium here in, in, in Germany where we had computer science as one of the, the majors there. And that was really nice because um, that was clearly my passion. I already knew how to program before. So that was easy for me and, and I had a lot of fun there. Okay, so after learning Java there, I learned C and C++ sort of as a self-thought programmer on the side that also led me to my first, let's say, industry job as a working student um, where I then used C and C++ to program embedded systems and a desktop application that was connecting to the embedded system part and communicating with the microcontroller. The part of the C++ application was then ported to C Sharp. So that's how I learned C Sharp and the um, .NET framework. And then after working with that for a while, um, I then finally went back to the university actually there was a big overlap there where again at the university where we were programming mostly in java then most of the work that i did during my phd was using java programs um, primarily for the reason that we could run it on multiple um, different operating systems but also since two main research projects that we connected to that already existed were programmed in Java. And that's why um, yeah, Java was kind of the obvious choice. There was also one portion or one, one uh, research program that we used where we did a lot of C and C++ programming. Well, then after that, um, I went again into the embedded systems business, but primarily as a software architect. So there, I did not do uh, a lot of programming myself, but of course also code reviews, analyzing of code and um, designing. And then after, or at the same time actually, um, I also learned Objective-C and Swift to do some app programming, um, iOS apps, and that then ultimately led to React Native um, to have one code base for both an Android and an iOS app, which is just less maintenance work, right? It's one code base for all, and it's, it's much easier than just maintaining two individual apps, both for iOS and for Android. And if you do this as a side project like I do, then of course it makes a lot of sense to do this in one language to just save the time. There's also a little bit of Perl and Python and Visual Basic script that I used somewhere along the way. We also learned the R language in um, the university to do data analysis. And um, then there is two let's say very special languages. One is the so-called Promola language, 
which is the language of the model checker spin that is used to model programs and the other one is prism which is the syntax of the prism model checker that it's also used to build stochastic system models um, so that's something that you probably only would learn when you are really interested in doing research on model checking so you see a lot of different programming languages um, i can still remember that probably after learning first php and javascript that the hardest language to learn was really c and c plus plus when you are used to just having all the memory management and so on taken care of and um, i mean in, in in php you don't even have to worry about or at that time you didn't even have to worry about variable types and so on so you could just could use the same variable for an integer and a string and and then you learn c that there definitely is a difference so if you would ask me now which one of those languages is the hardest one to learn then probably it's c c plus plus but at the time i was also learning those languages with books right there was no stack overflow around or at least um, no easy access there there was no uh, youtube around where you could watch videos where you got trained and so on if you would ask me which program language i enjoy programming in the most then i would probably say right now that's php and react native probably php because that's the language that i have used most of the time for more than 20 years now so just because of of i have used it that long and react native because it's really amazing how you can build apps for both android and ios at the same time it has a very nice um, community there is a lot of stuff available and if it does not work the way it um, is intended or the way you need it it's also quite easy just to dive into the native code and change the native code uh, so that it uh, yeah does whatever you were missing the other reason why i maybe like react native and and especially also php is because of the ease of use I still remember nights debugging C++ compile and linking issues, right? Where you just don't get a real clue on what actually is going wrong. Um, nowadays, yeah, the, the compilers give you more hints or the linkers on, on what you need to do to make it working. But still, it sometimes can really be tough to figure out what's not working here and the ease of use especially with php or javascript is just it just works right there is no compilation step um, and uh, it's so easy to change code and check whether it's running or not are there other program languages that i would like to learn in the future well one thing that i definitely want to look into a little bit more is python so i think that's probably one of the next languages that i will try to do a project in just to learn it um, a bit more and i think what this whole discussion also shows is once you have mastered the basic principles of computer science and programming what is a variable um, how does control flow work what's a loop what's a loop invariant things like that it's pretty easy to learn different languages yes you always have to get to know the syntax and and the the, the special ins and outs but um, once you have that level of understanding of the basic concepts you can learn a language pretty fast so this is the overview of the program languages that i have been using this far 
if you have also been using one of those or if you have suggestions on what program language I should learn next, please leave a comment down below. If you have liked this video and want to learn more about programming and software engineering, please consider subscribing to this channel. And of course, if you have liked this video, please also destroy the like button. And I see you in the next video.